I could tell you, ah, 72 hours. I could tell you mm, seven to nine days. I could tell you mm, three to six months. Is it going to have any difference in your life at all? First of all, the answer is it depends anyway. There's not, there's not one answer. As you so rightly said in the Gita, we're told it all depends on our karma. That which happens to us is based on our karma. What situation we're going to be reborn in, whether we're going to be reborn, how soon we're going to be reborn, it's all, it's all based on our karma. So don't worry about whether it's going to be a matter of hours whether it's a matter of days, whether it's a matter of weeks or months. It's going to be somewhere between that. Somewhere between an hour and a few months, you can say. But what really matters, if you're following the Gita, if, if your foundation of your question is based on the Gita, is based on the religion, then what matters is why are you anxious to take another body to begin with? The whole teaching that Lord Krishna gives us in the Gita is you should become free. You should live in such a way that you're not a prisoner to your karma. You should live in such a way that you're free even in this body even right here, right now, such that after you leave the body, you don't have to take another one. You might choose to take another one. It's what the gurus do. You know, the way it's explained is it's the distinction between the prisoner and the jailer. Both of them are in jail. Prisoners have no choice. They're stuck. They've got a sentence. The jailer has a choice. He's chosen to be there. He can go home at the end of the day. If he doesn't want to show up at work tomorrow, he doesn't have to show up at work tomorrow. So if you had a choice, use the choice to be free rather than thinking about, okay, well, after I die, when I'm still stuck and I'm going to take another body, how long is it going to take? Instead of thinking like that, think, how can I live the years I have left so that when I die, I just merge into God? I don't want to take another body again. Or if I do, I want to take one fully, freely with consciousness where, when, how I want. Not in a way that I'm stuck. But that's, that requires a lot of work in this lifetime. And so ask yourself, how can I use my hours, my days, my weeks, my months, my years left such that when I die, immediately, immediately, it's like a drop returning to the ocean. I'm right there already. It's like my drop of water is sitting right there on the edge of Ganga already. It doesn't have to come all the way down the mountain and find its way over a period of hours or months. It's right there already. Because I've brought it there in this lifetime, consciously, through my spiritual practice. So that this, this journey over which I have no control ends here. Think about that. Think about that more than, more than how long it's going to take for your next uncontrollable incarnation because you still have the choice. You still have the power. You still have the opportunity to change everything about next life. That's, that's where grace comes in. 
even with whatever you've done, even with whatever karma you've already accrued, you have the power right here, right now, through your spiritual practice, to shift that and change that and adjust that in such a way that you can be free. And why even wait till next life? I mean, why not, why not be free now? What I've seen is it actually depends in many ways on the different specific lineages or paramparas that people come from. It even varies based on where in India you're from. South, east, west, north, even, even regionally, people tend to do it differently. Um, a lot of people have ceremonies on certain days that are within the first couple weeks, ninth day, 11th day, 13th day, 16th day. Those ceremonies have different specific meanings in their traditions. My instinct about the year is, because remember, the Gregorian calendar, this is not, a, this is not the Hindu calendar. Somebody passes away on, you know, May 1st, and I, I do a puja May 1st next year. Well, that's, that's based on a calendar that didn't even exist when our scriptures were written. So clearly, it's not a scriptural injunction to follow that calendar. That's going to be much more just a cultural thing as we talk about birthdays and we talk about anniversaries. It's just in honor of the person. Some people tend to celebrate their birthday. Some people celebrate the day on which they passed. Some people celebrate the day on which they did the actual ash immersion, final rite ceremony. Some people do it Gregorian calendar. Some people do Hindu calendar. It, it varies. That I don't think matters. I know that there's very, very specific injunctions about the pujas that take place in the days and weeks immediately after somebody dies. But whether you honor them, 365 days after they pass or 365 days after you do the ash immersion, or whether you do it according to Titi, the Hindu calendar, I don't think it matters. I think all that matters is you're remembering them, you're celebrating them, so whatever is convenient for people.